After many requests, I've decided to re-upload Rich Piana's autopsy video that I did about a year ago. This video is always timely. Obviously, still people are doing steroids and I do see that people are getting hurt. So I decided to put this back up on the internet. And this brief introduction is to tell people to be careful. If you're on steroids, please see doctors. Please consider getting off steroids. I'd love to help you assess your health if you're on steroids and to see if we can get you safely off steroids. Thank you so much. All right, so Doc, welcome. Um, I just want to touch on, you know, Rich Piana is back in the news. I know he, you know, his autopsy it just came out. Louis Marco actually posted a video last night. Shout out to Louis Marco for posting that video. He uh, he kind of touched on all the things that you know the autopsy had been posted on about Rich Piana. Um, what are your thoughts, Doc? Give the viewers a walkthrough, Doc, of the autopsy and kind of the cause of death and just the general kind of the whole autopsy. If you want to get right okay. into it. So this is this is going to be an evidence based uh, review. Obviously, I'm, I'm a medical internist. I'm a board certified internist. Uh, we want to go through this and stepwise it. Conclude on Rich and let him rest in peace, obviously, because I knew Rich. He was a great guy, and this is unfortunate that anyone's dying, so has died. So let's let's take it with the autopsy report right in front of me. Autopsy report, Rich Piana, date of death, August 25th, 2017. This report is, is dated uh, October 30th, so quite a delay. And again, um, there's some politics in that, but let's get down to the bottom line here. Autopsy findings is what we find. It's cardiomegaly, so he's got a hugely enlarged heart, double the size of a standard person's heart. He has bronchopneumonia with bilateral purulent pleurofusion, so at that time. He's got ascites, brain edema, ischemic necrosis. He's got discoloration of the skin and the sclera, no recent significant injuries. We have no injuries and no hospitalization uh, specimen available for toxicology. That's the bottom line. That's what it says on the findings. Then, of course, we have all the details underneath. Let me lay out what happened. Let me lay out what happened. Here's what we know going back. Rich Piana, on, on the day that he uh, entered the hospital and EMS was called, was apparently feeling well, was with his girlfriend, and was getting his hair cut in the bathroom. He had a loss of consciousness, which is called syncope. He had a syncopal event, which means his eyes rolled up and he went down. And that's that's all we know. At that time, he he here's then you think, why did he have that? What's the cause of a syncopal event? It's either respiratory failure or an arrhythmia, cardiac. Okay. And so the arrhythmia could be either from amphetamines, I see it, and the respiratory failure from narcotics or drugs, could be from drugs. And in the end of the day, Rich hit the ground, and at that point of time, he either his heart was either uh, not beating or he was in a dangerous rhythm that I'll discuss here in a minute that I think he had, it's common, or he was in respiratory failure, was not breathing. So it's heart or lungs, heart, lungs. It's very straightforward. At that time, we know sooner or later, within minutes, Rick, Rich was not breathing and his heart was not pumping. And, and this is, I, I would assume, being supported by the girlfriend's uh, testimony of what, her, what she was providing for life um, support. She was doing the compressions and doing CPR. And then it's supportive by the paramedics' findings. Without a heart beat, without breathing for at least 10 minutes, I think maybe 20 minutes, so that's called anoxic brain injury. And that's actually supported on the, the clinical autopsy findings of, of his brain in the end. But then I will say that after 18 days in the hospital, a lot of the autopsy findings are, I'm not saying they're useless, and there are some things that are very relevant here that I'm gonna go back on for the mechanism of action for how he died. But they're colors of the, of the organs and things. Those are useless. The, the, your 18 days in, in ending up septic in the hospital for 18 days and having multi-system organ failures and then dying from what is a pneumonia okay septic and pneumonia bottom line that's what happened to rich so doc i want to touch on 
why he syncopized. Why did he? Why did he pass out? Why did he? Mm-hmm. Why did he go down? You said it was either arrhythmia or respiratory. Could yeah. you touch a little bit on that? Yeah. So again, let's go back. He syncopized. He dropped to the ground rapidly. He wasn't in bed sleeping, and they just found him. He dropped. Then, what happened? Why did he drop to the ground and lose consciousness? And then he hit his head. But that's incidental because on the autopsy findings, he had no trauma and no broken cranium. The brain findings are consistent with with severe anoxic brain injury from what happened in the field from that 18 days before the day he died. He died in the field. Rich died. His heart stopped. Now, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what's going on here. Rich dropped. He had a dangerous arrhythmia called V-fib, ventricular fibrillation. Now, that's a dangerous rhythm that your heart ventricles are beating so fast and it's chaotic, it's not organized, and you're unable to produce cardiac output. So within seconds of that happening, you lose consciousness and you fall. And your heart's either restoring its own rhythm by itself or a precardial thump or electricity. Now, the paramedics came and they did. They did restore his heart rate. That's guaranteed. He brought him back to life. It's incredible what they did. Too late. Rich died, and he he was not able to pump blood to his brain, causing what we see on this finding, anoxic brain injury. But imagine it was either amphetamines, and we're going to get the the real bottom line is his heart. It's heart, and I it's a multifactorial condition. I'm going to lay out for you, which which my suspicion of of what actually happened is, Rich may or may not have done some cocaine, snorted his own pre-workout snorted some oxys, took oxys, and so on and so forth. Probably not narcotics. Narcotics, you don't, you don't syncopize, of course you can, directly from narcotics. You, 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 of course, if you're injecting a ton of narcotics with fentanyl, you will syncopize, but you're probably already laid down in bed or a chair or on the ground, okay? Rich rolled back, eyes rolled back. The girlfriend said that. So that's going to be such a rapid cutoff to blood supply to the head because of heart, heart rate. So he went into a dangerous rhythm. So my side is an arrhythmia. It's V-fib, V-tac and V-fib. Okay, it's just what it is. From what I'm gathering, it's definitely not, it's, it's definitely not lungs. It's definitely heart. The lungs killed him in the end because he went through a decline over 18 days and he was septic and he had, in the end, he succumbed to a a hospital-acquired pneumonia. They they let him go. They made him comfortable, I'm sure, at that point. I'm sure he was septic and I'm sure his blood pressures were in the tank and they they made decisions that... And then he starts having multi-system organ failure. And those are the findings you see, the congestion in the the, the kidney and the liver and the the small amount of ascites. That's a transudative fluid that's in the abdominal cavity. It's nonspecific. I believe he he has an arrhythmia. Now, let's talk about the mechanisms that I, I, I love. This is so cerebral for me, for an expert to put together. And again, we're just putting these together based on knowing, know, knowing what, what happens commonly and as much data that we have. And there's some data we don't have. We don't have tox support. We don't know if it was cocaine, amphetamines, narcotics, alcohol. We, don't, we just don't know. So I'll bet you none of that played a role. Rich had a massively enlarged heart. Let's talk about the data now and, uh, that we know. He had cardiomegaly. His heart was 670 grams. The average heart is about 300 so Richard's heart was twice the size. And I think for the data, Rich explained in the last couple months or a year, he had a large heart and he was working on that stuff. And so steroid users, growth hormone use, insulin, so on and so forth, being a big man, just by being 300 pounds, his heart's lo- in, in proportionally going to enlarge. We're not going to implicate steroids just yet. We're gonna, it's a multifactorial process. So Rich has an enlarged heart. He may or may not does drugs, the amphetamines. I would say cocaine, amphetamines. You can get vasal spasm of the coronary artery, which could lead to a myocardial infarction, either there, either transiently, or he had a blocked heart, which the data shows that he didn't have coronary artery disease. This is scientific now. Rich didn't have a heart attack, folks. He did not have a myocardial infarction. Why? Because on the evidence, on the, on the autopsy, he had no scarring. He had a necrosis. He had a massively enlarged heart, but his coronary arteries 
interestingly enough, he had mild coronary artery disease. Mild. Not enough, not enough occlusion and blockage to cause an acute thrombus, probably, and therefore myocardial infarction. But this is what I see for steroid users when they have bypass surgery and stents place if they have a heart attack. Rich didn't have a heart attack. Rich had an arrhythmia. So Tom, in lamest terms, he didn't have enough plaque in his arteries to cause a heart attack. No, no. Pretty good genes because for 46 year old man, the way he was living with the steroids, pretty damn good genes. This is, this is science though, folks. He didn't have coronary artery disease significant. He didn't have a heart attack. He did have, he did succumb to his heart though. He had an arrhythmia. Let's talk about the arrhythmia, okay? He had an arrhythmia, which is called uh, ventricular fibrillation. Common things are common. As a matter of fact, if you look for the data, for people that collapse in the field, in, outside the hospital, before the hospital, up to 85% of them have an arrhythm called V-fib. Okay, what causes V-fib? The majority of V-fib is called, is, is called by coronary artery disease. Rich didn't have coronary artery disease, not enough to cause V-fib. The next would be congenital heart disease. There's congenital abnormalities in the electrical system, not to mention the large septums and so on and so forth that can cause it. Rich had an enlarged heart massively. He had cardiomyopathy, excuse me, cardiomyopathy. Here's what I think happened. His heart was globally enlarged. They didn't do biopsies of the heart muscle. They didn't talk about it. They talked, this is an autopsy. They don't do that. It wasn't done. That moon's lined up. He might have tipped it off with some snorting, some uh, pre-training uh, stuff that he does or some cocaine or amphetamine. It doesn't even matter. It's the moon's lined up. He went, he dropped into a dangerous arrhythmia called V-fib, no question. He was on the ground, he was in V-fib, his heart wasn't connecting, it wasn't going back into sinus rhythm. They tried, the girlfriend, God bless her, she tried to, to do what a first responder would do with having technology and, and uh, ACLS protocol, and she called 911. They came, I don't know, Matt, they, they came, 15, 20 minutes? Probably too late. He was dead. Rich entered the hospital with severe anoxic brain injury. It says it right here. It's just necrotic. He had brain injury. But he didn't, he didn't die from a blood clot in his head. He didn't, oh, he didn't die from a blood clot in his lungs. That's a pulmonary embolism. It's interesting that PMMA and synthol and some of these injectable oils can actually break off and you can get oil embolus and what looks like a pulmonary emboli, but he didn't die from that because that would be something they'd pick up right then and there in the, in, in the ER, in the acute workup. So he's put in a medically induced coma, of course, and they stabilize his heart and he is waiting and his brain was, was very damaged. And I'm sure at a point with the family over this period of time, they made decisions to make him comfortable and they, they, they held life support and he moved on. And in the end, the absolute reason for death is sepsis. And that's evident by the, the bilateral pneumonia. He had, he had a purulent pleural effusion, so he had a pneumonia. But that, that's, that's the end. That's, not what, that's why they say that's not the cause of death. That was but just the reason that they pulled the plug. The, that's right. Well, that, that that's he's septic in the end. He died. Wow. The multi-system organ failure, sepsis. So, the reason for Rich's is death is an arrhythmia, superimposed secondary to a massively enlarged heart, and decompensated state. And uh, it's multifactorial. The drugs play a role. The steroids play a role because they enlarge his heart over years. They did not cause coronary disease. But I see mainly steroids causing coronary disease, and I see anabolic steroids causing enlarged hearts. The literature is supportive of this. I, I want to help men that are on steroids that can come for help. I want, if you're on steroids, please come to me, reach out. I will help you, I will not discriminate. I understand what you're doing, and I want to evaluate you and care for you and provide you with data how large is your heart? What do your arteries look like? Your labs, your CBC, your red blood cells. Now, everyone gets all caught up in all these details, but I do it as a medical expert. It's my day job. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. 
and I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy.